Tuesday evening. Uh, it's the David and Chuck show. Uh, it's, good Lord, it's the 17th of October, Chuck. Where is time going? Did you get a deer? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, I'll tell you what I do have. What? Oh. <laughs> Oh, you patronizing the, the Tennessee Volunteers this week, third third Saturday in October. It's third Saturday in October. Uh, I mean, the last few, you know, I mean, last last Friday night, this Saturday coming up, uh, uh, real rivalries, pretty cool stuff. Right. They're going to have to start moving their rivalry, uh, Tennessee and, and Alabama, to about two weeks later or two weeks prior the Pisca Tuscola game. Now, that's just too close together, these two rivals. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, welcome, everyone, to the David and Chuck Show. It's uh, on a beautiful, crisp fall night, and it's about time. It's, it's turning into fall, Chuck, real fall. It seemed to come late, but then all of a sudden the weather's turned cooler, even down here in Winston-Salem. And we were just, Deuce and I were just talking. It seems, it feels like, you know, winter may be coming a little bit earlier. Well, Janet said something and she was showing me that, that, that it's supposed to be pretty tough and we hadn't had one in a while. So, uh, hey, before we get going, yeah, Deuce, Deuce has, he really, really, he must, he, he has, his shoe game tonight is pathetic. I'm oh. disappointed in him. Uh, we might have to throw him off the team. Well, I mean, he was, we're not just it's embarrassing. Uh, his shoe game tonight, Deuce. He's, look, man, plan a he, he's, he's wearing Crocs. 22 years old, was a big time basketball player down here and developed plantar fasciitis and tendonitis in his feet. His feet are hurting today. Listen, that's an excuse. He's let me down. Show, show everybody your shoes, Deuce. Show them your Crocs. Pull those things up and get them close. Those are Johnny Quest shoes. People don't know. Smart. I love Johnny Quest, but come on, man. You those let me shoes. down. I love you. Don't make me come down there and, 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 and just, you know, step the game up, man. Step the game up. Step it up. Hey, <laughs> hey, you got to leave my man alone. Deuce I love him, man. That's cool. He's my basketball guy. You but, know me. I can't pick basketball. He's my basketball guy. Well, I can't wait for you know. And after football season, we're going to do the David and Chuck show, and we'll continue doing what we do on right. on these on our on our many platforms and and uh, uh, you know we'll we'll we're, we'll talk some basketball. We don't talk really NBA, but we're going to talk a lot of high school and college. Absolutely. But anyway, welcome to the David and Chuck show and. Uh, we, we got a lot to get into tonight, but I want to, again, I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank, I'm going to kind of go slowly through this tonight. I want to thank Sutton and Sons Antiques at, uh, up at 3156 Delwood Road. And uh, I went up there uh, Monday just, to, and I toured that place by myself. I had to go get some tags and they said it would take a little bit and get some registration. So I went up there and took about an hour and 20, 30 minutes and the, that place is packed with all sorts of things. It's got furniture. It's got a uh, hundred and fifty year old cast iron pots and pans that's that that are better than anything we have today. They've got antique trucks. They've got boat motors. They've got furniture. They've got uh, uh, World War II paraphernalia, uh, uniforms. They've got signs i mean anything that you can imagine but uh we you and i grew up uh in the uh, uh arcade age and also in the in the age of uh, the pinball machine check this out guys got a pinball machine up there check out that pinball machine check this out if i can get this to work because i don't know what i'm doing check out this jukebox oh I like that. And it I'll works. I'll they've got it. old, hey, they've got albums, they've got 45s, they've got all sorts of stuff. And you know, that kind of stuff is back in now. The kids today, they like to play vinyl. Look right there. Go see our friends at Sutton and Sons. And for the only people on here 
Deuce does not know what I'm fixing. When he sees this, he won't have a clue what this is. People our age know. Rotary phone. Rotary phone. <laughs> and it works. It works. That is awesome. Now, now they not, none of these kids would have a clue. So visit our friends at Sutton and Sons, great supporters of the program. And then uh, I was really tired. And I was really tired, and I didn't take my phone in with me. But I went and sat down and had uh, a, 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 a latte, a oh, sugar-free latte with sugar-free vanilla and Splenda up at Orchard Coffee at 39 Depot Street in Waynesville and uh, just sat there and, and just the, the vibe in the building, the vibe from the employees, the vibe from the people, uh, really great place to go. And, and it was about a 30 minutes that I shut the world out and was able to sit there with, with my latte and uh, just kind of just cool. And so uh, go visit our friends there. And uh, uh, I got for, you know, as far as what our, our part of it is down here at Crompton's Auto Mart, go to CromptonAuto.com. Uh, I've got a lot of cool stuff. I've got some trucks out here that you're going to want. I've got a Toyota Tundra that you want. I've got a Silverado uh, that you want. Uh, I've got an F-150 that you want. I've got the coolest Jeep Wrangler in town. I've got the absolute coolest Jeep Wrangler in town. And good credit, bad credit, no credit. Come see us, crontonado.com. Uh, so now, Chuck, I'll throw it yeah. to you. Let's talk a little Friday night and, uh, and and talk some sports, buddy. All right, let's go. Roll it. Friday night, what an environment in Waynesville, North Carolina for the uh, – for the uh, in in our in my bias when I say this absolutely, but the number one high school rivalry, the number one high school rivalry in America, the Tuscola Pisgah game. What a crowd! What an environment! Uh, uh, great to be on the Waynesville side. Uh, and uh, uh, any questions uh, about the physicality? Any questions about the toughness of these kids? Uh, uh, I don't think, yeah, I, I think that's a moot point period. And, you know, I can't, I don't, I don't say a whole lot on Saturdays about those things because it's not my job to do. My job is just to kind of facilitate with you and Jonathan, but, uh, they lined up and they proved a point and, 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 and I think they got, not, not, they got tired of hearing it. They got yeah. tired of hearing it. And, uh, and, and, and they were physical. And, and they were ultra physical. Right. I think that the, uh, it, it's just, it's such a wonderful rivalry. But then after, hours after, you know, the, the conclusion of the game, there is the winner, there is the loser. You begin to start thinking about the seniors and then the kids who lost, the seniors yeah. that lost the game. You always feel for them. Yes, and sir. Both, both schools feel, you know, had that experience, you know, many times. And, you know, this rivalry is almost dead even. There's a three-game three, three game win advantage right now in favor of Pisgah. So, you know, they have felt 26 times that ugly feeling, and, and Tuscola's 31 times they felt that ugly feeling. So you go out to that. But what you applaud is the fact that those kids gave you great entertainment. And people – can come and say, well, it's not really, you know, because they don't have a whole lot of Division One players. You know, you go home and watch a game on television, and they have, oh, this guy's five-star and this guy's four-star playing in the game. But for one night, they play like they're D1. For one night, they reach a level that they will you know, they may never reach again. Yeah, That's what's so special about this thing. And so the outcome, you know, so be it. Um, you, you know, you have yep. your, your, your opinions and, and yep. you just, you award and you celebrate the kids who just played lights out. And, 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 and the, the beauty of it is we, we could be sitting at, you know, we, there, you know, there's a 50, 50 chance we're sitting here next year and I'm going, man, they played their guts out, but, and that's the beauty of, of this thing. I, I think it's, I think it's, I think, uh, you know, and I hate to, you know, when you use those words, people go up, but 
it's a beautiful thing to see. It's a beautiful thing to, to you know, in, in the heat of battle. Right. It is what it is, you know. Uh, and I, I'm going to take, can, can, I, can I do something for a second, Chuck? Uh, you, I, 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 I usually, you know, don't, certain things I don't do. But people that know me and people that know Coach Metcalf, Charlie Metcalf, uh, Charlie is uh, one of the best people I have ever had the privilege of knowing. Now, he was my first football coach. He was just a kid, and I was just a kid. I was his first running back, 1974. 1973, I was 10 or 11 years old, 11. And we we ran the box, the Notre Dame box. And I was the guy, and he was the coach. And we went undefeated. And, he, and, and uh, I still have a picture of that football team in my home when we're sitting there with city champions across the top of our helmets, the Asheville city champions. And I've known him since then. Uh, through his battle, his multiple battles with cancer, uh, when he left uh, and coached down in, in, in your, the part of the state where you're at now, High Point, High Point Andrews, and all that. And I'll tell you that to say that he just we're, we're close. And, 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 you know, men aren't supposed to say certain things, but, but, but man, we love each other. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting in the stands before the game. He's the quarterback coach over there. He's known Jonathan since Jonathan was born. And uh, right before, maybe 20, 30 minutes, well, an hour and a half before kickoff, my phone buzzed. And I thought it was you because on Fridays, most people leave me be, and then you and I do our texting. And I said – and I'm sitting in the stands again, you know, I was late. I got there at three Oh five, but I looked at it and it was a text from Charlie and, and, and I'm going to read it. If, if you, if you, if I can, well, you, you good with that? Yeah. Well, and it just it says, look, it says tonight, I'm going to try to beat you all. And I know that you and, I, or, or, and, and Jonathan are going to try to beat us, but that does not change us. I love you, man. You have always been one of my favorites, and I hope to see you tonight, whatever happens. That's good. That's the perspective that I wish that a lot of people had. Because when it was over, uh, before they got on the bus, Avery and I got to spend about 10 minutes with Charlie down on the corner, just us. And uh, that's what it's all about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, right. and I have a similar type story, but it doesn't involve me. It involves two players that play Friday night and they're cousins. And it's Stephen Brooks and yes. uh, David Brooks. And after that hard fought game where all blood, sweat, and tears were left out on the field, yep. Stephen Brooks and David embraced and stood there, won a loser, won a winner, and took a picture together. I have the video. I'm going to send it to you. We and, I, and again, I, I'm not ashamed to tell you mm -hmm. that it's about a three minute video and I will send it to you tonight. Uh, I'm not, I, I, it, I, I had tears streaming down my face. One's a winner. One's a loser, but they're family. Yeah. The Brooks family. They played youth football all the way up. Uh, one's a junior, that's David Brooks, and, and Stephen obviously is an outstanding senior uh, uh, lineman. Yep. And, and the fact remains is one was a winner. The senior went out the right way, but he took his cousin, who he played youth football with, and when it come middle school, they split, and they're like brothers. And the fact remains is that they stood there and took the time for prosperity to say, no matter what the results, and they took that picture. And I yeah. think – all as adults, when we before we start typing things on social media, and we start calling people 
we we need to embrace the fact of what those two young men just showed us. That's right. The rival. No truer words, Chuck. No truer words because the uh, you know sometimes you know sometimes uh, I, I can just be a smart ass. You know what I mean? I can, but you got you know you got to admit what you can't what you are. And uh, uh, I and, and there's times I know I got to be better at that. But uh, uh, a guy and I'm, again, this is that, that's on, on a social media thing that came directly to me today, and it's on a subject about one of one of our kids, and uh, it was kind of just it was really stupid. And I and I said, hey, you'll like this. And because and, and, oh. you're gonna you're gonna laugh because I know this. I said, "Hey, man, I'm hanging on here, guys." And so, I said, "While we have a moment, let me tell you my life story." No, 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 because it, this it just you know people just trying to Flint, be tourists to 16, 17 year old kids. I don't get it. So I said, "Hey, this is what? a place for positivity <laughs> and and disseminating information about our Dave. program to our friends and family." Now, listen to this. You're gonna like this. We've been off the air. No, no, we haven't. I, my screen was all dark. Did you no, no, you're good. I promise you're good. We haven't. Oh, so nobody heard me talk about my life story. Born in Flint, drank the water. <laughs> so, but let me. You're gonna like this because I want you to fall over backwards. Gotcha. And I said this is a place uh, for, to disseminate information uh, and positivity for our friends, family, and, and our community. I'm so sorry that you seem to have nothing better to do than to make snide little one-line comments. This is about your third time. If you feel the need to act like a sad seventh grader, I suggest you find a message board that ble that breeds others just like you. You know, grown men that never had the ability to perform on a field in front of people. Wannabes, has-beens, never was -es, couch potatoes. Have a good day. Where'd you get that? I topped it. Oh, okay. I did it. That was pretty good. Can it help you? Or pretty eloquent. Know. No. Pretty eloquent. So anyway, what an environment. What great kids on both sides. And look, it's emotional. And, and uh, you know, it's over. We'll do it again next year. And, uh, you know, right now, uh, both these teams have a lot to play for. Because uh, the Mountaineers certainly uh, – the, you know, the their schedule, uh, they, they're ending with Smokey. It's going to be a heck of a football game. There's a lot of emotion going to be in this one. And then got to turn right around and play West Henderson. I don't know the scenarios uh, of uh, the playoffs or any of that stuff. But as far as the conference is concerned right now, you know, we're – you know, we're, we're in second, you know, we can end up in second, the, the Mountaineers can end up in second place in the conference. Now that's two really good football teams. You got to play first. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, and, and again, the smoky game is going to be emotional. It's going to be hard fought and, but, but God, you love playing in those things. So they got a shot and, uh, uh, uh Pisgah's at two and two in the conference. Tuscola's at two and two, uh, North Henderson plays a non-conference game this week because we of the seven teams, there's always the odd game and there's no open weeks anymore. So they're three and two. Everything, as we say, runs through Mills River. They're four and oh. Uh Smokey's two and two. Franklin's two and three. And East is 0 and four. So uh I don't know how it all I don't know anything about tiebreakers. I don't know anything about any of that. I just know what this what the records are. Right. If if uh, looking at that schedule and the, and the conference side of the standings, if and first of all, my opinion really doesn't matter, but it's my opinion. Following this uh, this rivalry for since two thousand four, actually being involved in it, both teams will be flat. To some degree, they'll be flat. They got to weather the storm. Um, they will come out, they will, you know, it could be one series, it could be one half, but they're going to somewhere, they're going to have to weather the storm 
and they'll be a little flat. So that uh, it may not be as crisp as it was Friday this past Friday night. But no. if Tuscola beats Smoky Mountain, and that's an if, Smoky's well coached, and Smoky uh, gave Pisca fits. And then that puts the Tuscola at three and two, tied with North, okay, for second place. Pisgah is two and two. They, I can't, I'm not going to say they're going to win, uh, definitely, 100%. Well, their storm's a whole lot better than the storm that Tuscola's walking into Friday. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Good yeah. Way to put it. They will be three and two. Now, Tuscola holds the tiebreaker over Pisgah because they're head to head. Tuscola is about ready to play North in the season finale. Or no, excuse me. They're about ready to – North holds the, the tiebreaker over – Tuscola. Now, Pisgah goes in to play North and on the last week, and then Tuscola goes in to play West Henderson. If everybody you know holds talk and wins, our favorite teams win, and we'll root for them. The irony of this is that Tuscola is rooting for Pisgah. Yep. Yep. The irony is Tuscola has to be a fan of uh, – Pisgah has to be a fan of Tuscola, but also Tuscola has to be a fan of Pisgah. Yeah. You're right. That's odd because they, they need – Pisgah needs as good a playoff spot as they can get and they Tuscola needs Pisca to beat North. So everybody wearing black and yellow is gonna be rooting for the red and black. That's it. But I'll tell you, just as I say again, I'll tell you two people. I know Stephen Brooks will be rooting for Pisca and his cousin. And I know David Brooks, who said this, he said, I'm rooting for Tuscola all the way out. So I mean, you know, he, he they, 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 blood, that's blood right there. That, that's I, it, brother. Kids are wonderful kids. Yep. And that's what, and again, and, and I would be, listen, and, and, and before we get on and start talking about college football and, and uh, we, tr- we've, we've tried not to single people out, but I will tell you, uh, young Mr. West was special Friday night, man. Oh man. Oh man. Was Jed special. Uh, Made plays with his feet, made plays with his arm. Didn't ask him to do a ton with his arm. Uh, but, man, alive, uh, the play on the touchdown pass, uh, those are things you don't coach. Those are just – you just don't coach them. Uh, uh, tough running back there, uh, you know, uh, tough running by him, tough running by our tailbacks back there, uh, picking up big key third downs, a couple of fourth downs. Uh, good for them. Defense played well. But uh, but man, Mr. West was special, and and uh, uh, whoever he ends up with at the next level is going to be really glad you did. And uh, anyway, college football, Mr. Chuck, and and I'm let's, I'm going to do it in a way differently today. I'm not we're going to talk about the top twenty five and go down the rankings yet. We're going to I'm going to go conference to conference and talk about. The, what games in the conference are, are, have implications for the conference as well as the national scene, okay? ACC, Virginia at North Carolina. And North Carolina's ranked 10th. They're undefeated. North Carolina, and you can say this, I think, at this point now, uh, they have a chance to be one of the final four if if they continue to do what they're doing. Am I wrong? No, their defense is a very veteran defense. They have five graduates on the defensive side of the football. And in college, at that age, one year makes a difference. They are much better. And Gene Chizik is an outstanding defensive coordinator. Drake May is awesome. But they're there in the position they are in because of their defense. The game that I'm curious to see is number 16 Duke at Number four, Florida State at 7.30. And I don't, you know, Florida State is probably going to win the football game, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's a blowout here. 
Duke is Duke is legitimate under this guy. Yeah, uh, Elko was a offensive lineman, uh, and I think it was for Penn, but he played in the Ivy League. So he understands academics and sports. But the key for Duke is, is Riley Leonard going to get back? The high ankle sprain may keep him out another week. It may be a while because uh, I've heard this before, that you'd rather have a broken ankle than a high ankle sprain. You can get back faster with a broken ankle than you can with a high ankle sprain. So I don't know what they're trying, and every week he's doubtful. But if Riley Leonard, which is highly unlikely, plays it, it does not play in this game, it could be a long day for Duke. And it's, un, it's really hard to say. Unranked Clemson at unranked Miami. And – I think Clemson should win the football game, but there's some something's happening right down the road from here. Right. Something is going on, and it's not a positive thing at all. Uh as someone who saw how do how do I word this, Chuck? As someone who saw and uh, whose whose kid was the center of a program that was kind of in decline before you got there. And then when he got there. Uh, certain things happened in 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 in, in, in a slit. You, I can almost see Clemson in the situation that the Vols were in in two thousand eight. Uh, uh, it, it's it's turning ugly, ugly, ugly in in Clemson, South Carolina. Well, D, uh, Dabble went off today uh on a on a press conference you know saying that well we just might as well start losing and regroup or something like this is get and you uh, a while back said that dabble talks and walks like he doesn't want to be there like he's fed up with the whole college football scenario right now i don't know if that's true it seems like it could be true right now but something you know you listen to a podcast uh where they're talking about problems and scandalous things happening down at Clemson. Now, I didn't say that. I'm repeating what Unnecessary Roughness podcast. Guy gets on there and starts talking about all the things, but he says there it's going to probably come out that there's been some scandalous things happening at Clemson. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I now, that that I don't know anything about. This is the first time hearing about that. Right. But the thing about but the press conference uh, – uh, heard about that today, and uh, you know, and he's, I, you know, look, he built something pretty special, okay. And in in and in society today, uh, when they build you up, they won't tear you down. That's just the, you know, you can't sugarcoat it. That's just the way it is. Right. I've never been the biggest fan of his holier than thou thing. I just that's just kind of I don't. You know, I, I've I've always thought, and maybe, and I, and if I'm wrong, I, I'm good with that. But it's almost like he, it's it comes across as almost fake to me. But be that as it may, uh, he built something that w- was special, and uh, the world of football in in, in college it, it's a, at that level is you're going to go recruit your kids from high school. But you're spending the rest of your time re-recruiting your own roster. Uh, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings if you get on them too much. So they're going to go and go to another school, and they're going to leave because Debo was mean to me, or they didn't pay me enough money. And I don't think he's comfortable in that world, Chuck. I, I you know, I, and and I, for one, don't blame him for that. The, uh, uh, Maybe, maybe he, maybe being in a TV booth would be for him might be a better a better uh, fit for him now. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I do know this is that the the current uh, landscape of college football. I will tell you that after looking at depth charts for the last two weeks. 
the elite programs in this country do not have five graduates starting on the offensive line and redshirt seniors all over the place on one side of the ball. The, the elite programs have uh, second year, third year players, redshirt freshmen, redshirt sophomores. And then once they get to that third year, they're heading off to the NFL. So it tells you the state of Clemson's program. When you look at the age of the players on there, there are five, five and six year players and they're playing like this. So what has happened is there's a slip in recruiting. Now, you know, college recruiters, you know them better than anything. You sat and listened to them that they will use the scandalous, the word scandalous is things are not right in Clemson. If they're going to, you know, trying to get a player that Clemson wants that. So they're using that at, at, it, at uh, their advantage. So I don't know what is wrong at Clemson. I do know there is something wrong or some things wrong. And I can't put my finger on it. I'm just telling you what I hear from like podcasts or somebody comes out and puts it in writing. I'm thinking, well, if they're putting it in writing, they must know something I don't. If not, they'll be in a world of hurt, you know, for printing or saying something that's not true. Well, let me ask you this. Will Dabo be the football coach? In, in uh, February, and they're not going to fire him. And that's not what I'm saying. Is he going to, is there a possibility that he goes, you know, I, I've had enough of this junk. I got enough money. I can take care of my family. I can, my families can take care of their family who can take care of their family. Uh, I don't need this. I think the safe way for me to say about Dabo is let's see how the stretch run of the season goes if it goes really good he'll be back okay oh he's gonna have to if there are things wrong he's got i think he's he's a good man to where he'll he'll go and he'll fix those things now if they're scandalous meaning you know scandalous i've never heard that word used and it was used several times on on that podcast unnecessary roughness that i've never heard the word scandalous that's just kind of you know dark and deep and dark right there. It's, you know, not a you know, level one recruiting violation of buying hamburgers or cheeseburgers or something like that um, at this university. But, you know, I, so I think he'll be, I think he will um, come back depend if the season goes good. If the season goes bad, I would, boy, I would think he would want to step down. Okay. All right. Uh, there's not a, I'm not, there's no, I'm not going to waste one bit of time. I'm talking about the big 12 this week. Cause there's nothing really to talk about in the big 12. Uh, the big 10 plus 73, uh, uh, Michigan, Michigan state, number two ranked Michigan, who at this point in my rankings, I have number one. Uh, I just think right now in, you know, and everything changes week to week, but right now, I think they are the best team in college football. And I'm an SEC guy, but, man, they're good. But Michigan is at Michigan State, and Michigan State is beat up. They've had the scandal with the head coach. They've had everything in the world go wrong. Is that a recipe for the upset? Yes. There's always an upset uh, in the brewing of uh, one, Michigan State, uh, as of the last 15 years, has had Michigan's number. Um, they can have an inferior team and play them tough down to the end. Um, Michigan is known to stub their toe one time a year because you can, you can look at that regular season record for the last 20, 25 years, and there's not too many undefeated regular seasons. Okay? So you can count them on your hand. Um and it's that rivalry game doesn't – no, it doesn't – these people get nuts up there in Michigan between these two schools. And it's not – there's no respect for the rivalry. It's hatred. This is hatred. Case in point, last year, Michigan State got thumped, and they thought, okay, this isn't over. So they had 11 guys sitting out in the tunnel waiting for the Michigan uh, players to come one by one up that tunnel, and they went down on them. So that's still stuck in the crawl, and I think it's stuck in the crawl of Michigan 
So this will be an interesting contest. It will be, I think last year, Michigan State got uh, out of the first five plays, they got uh, three personal 15 yard personal foul penalties. Okay. But it is a recipe when they get together, the, 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 Lesser of the team, either ranking or talent, still can win. National imp- championship implications, number seven, Penn State, at number three, Ohio State. Big week for the Big Ten plus 62. Yes. <laughs> that, that's, uh, you know, I don't know a ton about Penn State. Uh, Coach Franklin – a former head coach at Vanderbilt uh, stepped in up there and uh, uh, just he's done a really good job. Right. Uh, He's done an an amazing job. Uh, I never knew much, you know, you always know about Ohio state, but I earned, uh, I I gained a ton of respect for coach day at Ohio state. Uh, And, and, and again, I'm, I'm an emotional guy and I like people like that. And what he said, uh, after uh, the Notre Dame game out on the field uh, during that interview, uh, man, I, I I want my kid to play for somebody like that. I really, really, really do. Uh, uh, his kids will be ready, but again, I think it's going to be really two good football teams. Uh, noon kickoff uh, on on Fox uh, seven and three, but this is this has national championship implications. Right. Uh, it's a big, big weekend for the Big Ten. So what are you thinking? Well, uh, it's at Ohio State. They, it's their bread and butter. They, they play well at Ohio State. The only team that probably could walk in there and beat them on their home field was Michigan. You got to be physical. You have got to beat on the, you know, Penn State has to physically whip on Ohio State. That is their Achilles heel. Finesse. There's nobody in this this country that can cover Marvin Harrison Jr. 6'4", 221. There's nobody. He goes down the field. It's, it's over. It's McCord, their quarterback. Can he get it and throw it on time and on the dime? So, but everything leads to Ohio State. Penn State's got, like, the last time they beat them at Penn State at Nittanyville, they got to get some breaks and some turnovers and convert at least one into six points where that – you can forecast a game, but you cannot force forecast a touchdown run back on a kickoff or a you know, pick six, a scoop and score. They got to have something like that it, it, because they're at they're at Ohio, and so your favorite place on earth. Yeah, that's my favorite place. Um, I I think it's Ohio big. I really okay. Do. I think after Ohio beats. Uh, Penn State soundly, I think Penn State's knocked out of the top 10, and I don't think they return. Okay. Pac 12. Uh, you still have got one, two, three, four, five ranked teams. Uh, but the national championship implications, uh, right now, again, I, I am all in on the Cougars. I mean, the, the Huskies from uh, right. John Taylor just about died when I, I said that. I apologize, John. Uh, but the number five Washington Huskies, do they play great defense? Absolutely not. But the one thing they can do is they can outscore you. They are a fast break basketball team. They are the Boston Celtics from when I was probably before I was born and up into the 60s. They are Showtime Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, They are Michael Jordan going down the court. They can score, and they are good offensively, and their quarterback is is special. Michael Penix cut his – you know, started his collegiate career at Indiana. Now, the difference between a Michael Penix at Indiana and a Michael Penix at Washington, who was at both places was very, uh, very good, was the offensive line. Indiana did not protect him. It was one injury after another. Now DeBoer, who was there at Indiana, went and went to you know went to Washington, took the Washington job, and Penix followed him because Penix is playing the same way. This Washington team protects their quarterback. 
This guy does not have to rush out and flush the pocket and get exposed out in open territory for violent hits. He's able to run that fast break offensive style up and down the field you go uh, offense. And so, yes, they can score a lot of points. And I think that uh, I think that the uh, Washington Huskies who play against Arizona State 1030, it's worth the watch to watch them. And I think they continue on with their winning ways. Arizona State's struggling mightily. Yes. Yeah. I don't think that the, I don't think that game, there's not much of a debate on winning uh, real quick, but because, because we got to get to some baseball real quick, uh, 14 Utah at 18 Southern Cal, Southern Cal cannot, cannot play defense. And Southern Cal cannot, cannot lose this fo- football game. Ranked at 18. If Utah goes into Los Angeles and beats Southern Cal, they're done. They're done. They're out of the top 25. A team that was once in the four top four spots has steadily, by their lack of impressive play, just steadily been dropped. And when they lost to Notre Dame, they fell to 18. Now, if they lose to at home to Utah, who can play defense, but the saving grace for USC is they're still playing with their backup quarterback, Utah. Yeah. Cam Rising's still out you know, with the knee injury. So I, if Utah wins this game, I could honestly see Southern Cal being knocked out of the top 25, if not dropping to about 25. And don't they, Oregon, even though they lost in that heartbreaker to, to Washington last week, Oregon is still not out of the national championship show just yet. Right. They're still in it. You tell your kids that one loss is you're still in it, but it's also you're you're in the position when we put ourselves there, is that you're hoping for one losses out of those teams that are in the top eight. That yep. if anybody starts losing and have one loss themselves, but if you have four teams this year, have four teams that go undefeated in that top eight, kiss it goodbye. You're not getting in. SEC. Army at LSU, I am not impressed with with LSU at all. Uh, just I, I thought that would be a lot better this year. I'm really looking forward to, to Lloyd to, to being able to spend some time with us on here. He's got some stuff that he's having to, to finish up and take care of some things, and, and the Swami will be back with us. And he lives down there now, so we can really give him a hard time. But uh, LSU and Army, uh, 13-0 miss. At Auburn, uh, Ole Miss is good. I pull for Lane regardless. So uh, South Carolina is the biggest disappointment in the SEC this year. Two and four. And uh, they're at number 20, Missouri. Uh, Mississippi State's at Arkansas. David? Yes. Two and five. (laughs) Yep, that's it. South Carolina at Mississippi, two and five. And there's some game – down in Tuscaloosa. Uh, man, the third Saturday in October. Uh, golly, on a personal thing, man, I love it. I love everything about it. Uh, I, I, I close my eyes and I go back and, and, and I remember we were sitting there in 2009. And, uh, you know, again, uh, it's painful for me on a serious thing with, with, when that kid blocked all the, the three – field goals that got blocked that game and uh, but uh uh mike matthews and janet and i sitting down there and you're going oh man here we go here we go and uh, and and just uh mike was hilarious at one point uh he broke the tension uh uh he had bet some money and uh he uh you, you know what he he and Jonathan are. You know what I mean? You know how they, they, they're close they are. And he goes, hey, it wouldn't hurt me if he threw a pick right here. <laughs> uh, so, but uh, Tennessee, Alabama playing in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Tennessee's ranked 17th. Alabama's ranked 11th. Uh, this, the implications of this game uh, are big. Big, 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 big. Uh, 
Tennessee cannot afford a loss. Alabama cannot afford a loss. So everything that everybody has, the players, the coaches, the managers, the trainers, the fans, the bands, you're, they're going to leave everything they have uh, in Bryant Denny on that field. Uh, I think it's going to be a great football game. And uh, uh, when I say this, uh, you know, you, you go back to saying, well, he played at Michigan, but uh, we've got an advantage at quarterback, I believe. And I think that's going to help Tennessee uh, because, you know, the Vols can run one play every nine seconds. And I think uh, his knowledge, he's gotten better at that. And, and I think we can wear that defense down. And uh, I don't think Alabama wants to get in a shootout with Tennessee this year. Uh, I see Tennessee in a close one on the road in a hell of an environment. That's the CBS game, so it'll take 12 hours with all the commercials, but uh, it's going to be a heck of an environment in Tuscaloosa. Well, uh, I have to disagree. I Hold on. Hold on. Excuse me. You writing that down? No, I'm just disagreeing on this day. I'm just doing this. Yeah, you're hungry. Okay. Oh, that's that Tuscola thing. No, that's no, 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 Tennessee. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Hey, that's a look. That's a pretty orange. Just it's the power of the tea, that. baby. But anyway, go ahead. I think that the um, Alabama. I think Tennessee's Achilles heel is on the defensive side. And I think that stopping the run is Tennessee. And I think Alabama advantage is not throwing the football. Um, they're, they're running a wrong scheme. In my opinion, they're running a wrong scheme at Alabama. Tommy Reese has got him on some Notre Dame, you know, two tight end sets and all this stuff and then throwing the ball. Not going to happen. They got to get RPOs out of, out of Milro. But with that said, they're going to have to run the football ball and they've got to run it direct at Tennessee. I think that plays into tennis, uh, uh, Alabama's hand. I've seen Joe Milton. I understand where you are in Joe Milton. He's your quarterback, and he's had some you know, very um, impressive performances. But I will tell you, Joe Milton will let you down in the biggest games. It's just it's too big of a stage for him. He's, he has a great arm, but he has zero accuracy. He's a phenomenal runner, but he runs when he should be throwing the football. I think this all plays into Alabama, and I think Alabama wins this game probably about 35-21. Late touchdown, maybe it was 28-21, and they get a late touchdown. But I think Alabama wins this. Now, you okay? No, I'm listening to every word you're saying. No, that's the way I see it. I think it's it's everything what you just said. I'm just going to fill in the opposite side and say, okay, I'm, I see it a little different. And uh, come about 3.30, 6, 7 o'clock, we'll um, – we'll, uh, what? We'll do, do you think – do you think that the kid from Tennessee, do you think that – He's capable of winning it at the end. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. I no. He could. He's going to disappoint you in a big game, but it may, may not be this big game. I just know that this kid just uh, when he drops back, Saban. When he drops back, this is his head. It's straight on who he's throwing to. There's no checks, no looking back, no reading. Uh, you know. His pro, uh, his reads, you know, his, um, you know, start off with the left hand side and just start moving over his progressions. But I tell you, you want to talk about six six and about two thirty and can fly, run, and throw it. You just don't know when when he's throwing it, where it's going. <laughs> he can fling it. Oh, he's. He you look at him in shorts and t shirts, you know, like Heisman. Heisman, but no. I think I I do I do I think Alabama's due for this. They've had two rough goes at it the late, last couple of weeks. They they really manhandled Arkansas in the first half, and then all of a sudden pulled the Deion Sanders 
Colorado Buffaloes and just disappeared in the second half against Arkansas. I'm thinking they're going to lose this game. So I think Alabama wins this game. Well, I think it, I think it's going to be close. I'd like to, and again, I'm not going to sit here and pick against them at this point. Uh, uh, but uh, going to be a, it, it's going to be a, a pretty cool environment, just like we were in here last week. You know, it's just it, it's always special, and and the, the passions run deep. Right. Uh, the, the passions run real, real deep. Uh, but there is a game at one o'clock. Everybody should be found. I'm listening. That is the mighty fighting Elma College Scots, 15th ranked, undefeated, six and zero, home against Kalamazoo College Hornets. They might score eighty. They're they averaging score almost. 80. Are they averaging a little over sixty? They uh, no, they. That uh, knocked down the average last week, uh, last Saturday when they won uh, 35-20. They only scored 35 on the road at Holt College. So that's got to bring it down to about 55. And we're pulling, you know, we're pulling for the for the for the Scots. Kids up, baby. They are a uh, unofficial sponsor of the uh, Dave and Chuck show. And to go off and play Division three college football the way it's supposed to be, Elma College is the most beautiful campus in the world. There you go. And hey, look, HOF, Chuck Febernitz. <laughs> That's it, baby. Dual HOF. I'm waiting for the sign to be put up on the entrance, to, uh, you know, to Elma College and, you know, the, the HOF, Chuck Febernitz. That's it. Um, uh, a, a massive game in Cullaway, North Carolina. Oh, massive, massive, massive football game. Uh, number four ranked Furman and number 14 ranked Western Carolina. And everything is on the line for the Southern Conference in this game. Everything. Because come playoff time, you're not guaranteed two spots, even though I think that they should have two spots from the SOCON get into the playoffs, but you're not guaranteed. So winning the conference championship is going to get you in. And these are two fine, fine, fine football teams. Here's how I think we can get two in there, David. I think being Western Carolina is ranked 12 and Furman's ranked four in the nation in one double A. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up as you're talking. Right. Is that Western beats Furman and they flip flop the rankings. So you're looking at, you know, the opportunity for Furman with one loss. Uh, I think they got one loss is to go and uh, we can get two in that way because they're highly ranked from the same conference. But the days where Appalachian State and Georgia Southern were in the conference, the, the Southern Conference now used to get four. You finish in the middle of pack and make the postseason. They don't do that anymore. Well, uh, you know, the, the North and South Dakotas kind of took those spots away. Right. I mean, they just have. and and uh, But uh, – Talk to me about what you're thinking. I think I think we need to have a and, and I hope they have a great crowd. They're gonna have a great crowd. I hope it's loud. I hope there's a lot of purple and white. Uh, I hope people I would like to see people drive by here with their flags and get out there and support this team because this is the biggest game that this program has played in decades. Decades. Right. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. I think this game comes down to uh, a game-winning field goal. They're so evenly matched. The reason why Western is 12 is because they've not had the history of being a highly ranked football program. Furman has. Furman has played and made it to the, uh, the national championship game and has gone deep into the playoff. So they've been there and they're a familiar name. You got to just shock somebody, and this is the opportunity for Weston. If it's going to happen, they got to shock the world and beat Furman. And I don't think it's a shock the world, Chuck. 
to voters and to the public not really following it as close yeah. as us? Because if we know, if they knew how Western was the way we know Western is, the coaching, the players, the talent, the explosive offense, they wouldn't have them at 12. They'd have them about six. So it'd be four and six. But so they're just not, it's almost like, you know, they're, it's Western. They'll, they'll break your heart. Yeah. So they have to go shock everybody on Saturday. And what a thing to be there in that stadium and watch it. And, and to, to be able to play at home. Right. And then to follow that up to get to get Mercer at home again on, on right. the, the 28th. Uh, you know, because here's the thing. They end, they, they've got Furman, then you got Mercer, and then you got Wofford, ETSU, and VMI. That's that's you know in in the Southern Conference. Besides the Citadel, it doesn't get much easier than that. Right. Now I know that that VMI is two and one in the conference, but they really haven't played anybody yet, and they're three and three overall. I tell you, they Western has a chance to you know. I mean, you're you're sitting here looking in the eleven one season. They have a chance. I mean, right. we, we can legitimately say. They can be eleven and one, and lost to a team in the SEC. The only loss was yep. to an SEC big boy, Arkansas. And and the very same thing at this point can be said for Furman, and their only loss was to South Carolina, and and they've got Western, then they've got ETSU, then they got to play Chattanooga, right, and then they got VMI and Wofford, but so they still got to play Western and and Chattanooga. So, the you know, the Cats, if you win Saturday, everything is sitting right in front of you. And not only to make the playoffs, but to be one of the, you know, uh, a top four seed. Right. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. Right. That's how big this game is. Yeah. 2.30, yeah. 230 kickoff. 2.30 kickoff in Cullowee. Get your fannies out there. Uh, it's just uh, no John Taylor. We can't. There's a let John Taylor says, Can you guys just start over? I'm just now getting off. John, you've missed the gold standard tonight, son. It's, it's the gold standard. It wasn't just a little good, it was great. It was awesome. It was spectacular. It was incredible. <laughs> now, we're going to have Tuscola fans upset with us that we're picking on John because John's the one when Johnson walked in. And the first day, he had nothing. No footballs, no jock straps, no mouthpieces, none, none of that stuff. It's all gone. And without hesitation, within three days, well, actually two days, John Taylor had boxes delivered to Tuscola High School. Jonathan had everything to start. Yeah. That's what. Absolutely. But we still, hey, we still pick on John because. That's right. Because, because they're going to blow it. They're just going to blow it. Which team? It doesn't make a difference because that's the team that he roots for. They're just going to blow it. Any team from Washington. The National Athletic Direct High School Athletic Director of the Year last year. That's right. Mike was the number one athletic director. Seattle Mariners, first place in the AL West. They're going to blow it. They did. Was, they did. The Washington, the Washington Huskies with a chance to win the national championship, and we have all jumped on board. His, It's because of him. We are on the Husky train because of him. Don't mention Tyrone Wheatley, who ran for, I think, 600 yards against Washington Huskies in the Rose Bowl. Michigan and, and Washington played in the Rose Bowl, and I think Michigan's Tyrone Wheatley, I think it was 600 yards he rushed for. Okay, maybe not 600, but it was close to it. John was left up in the stands, up in the uh, corner of the end zone stands, crying. Maybe. And while we're talking about friends, uh, and, and now that it, it's the, the – who was it the Saints played? Uh, and I don't remember. Was it uh, in, in the NFC Championship game? And Lloyd literally just got up and walked out of your house and didn't, wouldn't talk to us anymore. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We were worried you were going to commit suicide. I said, Oh, my God. Here, that was uh, yeah. So yeah, no. he just got up and walked out. Didn't even say goodbye. He was so mad at us because we we were picking at him. But uh, 
Hey, anyway, brutal. we are uh, we, uh, we uh, college football is going to be fun this week. Uh, support the Catamounts. Support the Lions of Mars Hill. Uh, up there, go support Alma College. But I'm serious when I say that. Uh, support your local teams. Uh, the, the Catamounts and the Lions here in Western North Carolina deserve fan support. They deserve your respect. And, and, and it's spectacular. And it's great football to see. If right. you've never gone to Mars Hill and seen a football game, you're missing something. A beautiful place, number one. A great team with great coaches and teach their kids to do things the right way. The Catamounts are close now. The Catamounts have a chance to compete for a championship. Go support these teams. David, I just got a text from our uh, good buddy, our newest uh, addition to the Dave and Chuck show, and uh, John Truett. We call him Bama Boy. Uh, he sent a text. He said, pass it on to David. Yeah, I got it. Roll Tide. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what you use toilet paper for, right? Roll Tide, yeah. That's right. I'll roll it. <laughs> you might not want it when I'm done, but y'all roll it. I but, can see now you guys cannot be in the same room watching the same game. Okay. Listen, uh, ALCS, uh, Texas is down two games to none, four out of seven. Uh, they lost both games at home. The, the Rangers are in the driver's seat, but I don't think that the Astros are out of it yet because they've been there, done that. But they game three is a they have to win game three. If they if they fall game uh, if they fall back three games to none, are in your mind are they out? Yes. Oh yeah. If they if they go two one and then lose the next game in Texas and they're down three games to one, are they out? Yes. Because okay. because. Uh, Evalde and Verlander. They, they big, big time players. And I don't care how old they are. They make, they, they're going to pitch well and they're right. going to keep them in the game. Even if it's shaky I national league championship series, uh, Philadelphia has the only real home field advantage in baseball. And it is wild up there. They're up one game to none over, the Diamondbacks, they play game two tonight. And, and game two tonight, if Arizona loses game two, it's over. It's over. They will not come back. They will not beat them. And and I, I need to hear you publicly say that Dave Dombrowski might be one of the best, best executives in the history of Major League Baseball because all he's ever done is win. I won't say it. But your heart knows. <laughs> I won't well, say hey, look, he 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 didn't build everything in Philadelphia, but he's kept that core together and he added to it. Right. And they have a special team. And, you know, we had talked near the end of the regular season, even though they were double digits behind the Braves, that Atlanta did not want any of – Philadelphia in the playoffs, and that proved to be right. Right. Philly is Philly is uh, real special. At uh, they almost got in last year, and they've redeemed themselves. Uh, who would have thunk that? Here we did. We picked our American League team, second best record in baseball, and that we picked uh, the best team that had the best record in baseball, Atlanta. And the teams that had that week layoff while the wild cards were all playing went one and 12 in the postseason. One and 12. I don't want to be off a week anymore. I just don't think you, you know. Yeah. You know, and that goes back. And, and, and again, I know that people will go, oh, y'all are just saying that. We had detailed discussions about that. Or is is getting the buy really? I think again, it is a detriment. Baseball is not like other sports. You brought that question and, up to the to the group. 
You were the and one. Jonathan, I, I saw Jonathan in 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 uh, as I, we were going home tonight. We uh, Janet and I had to drop something off, and he and his coaching staff were in the dungeon, and he and he let me come in there for just a second. I dropped something off, and we, and he said, "Y'all, you're getting ready to go do the show." And I said, "Yeah." And, and I said, "We're going to talk a little baseball." And and the last thing he said is, he said, "Getting the buy was okay when it was just the one game play wild card." But now you're off five days, and I and I believe, and we have been and I and, and I was right. But I'm with you were, but that, that leaves us an opportunity for next year when we go to future bet. Don't pick the favorite, the ones that are going to win it. Look to, for the longer shots; they'll pay more money. But I mean, look at Texas, or look at uh, the Phillies, and look at the teams that will finish second and make the wild card. Won't get the division because they're going to play right away and keep it going where the division winners are off a whole week. Yeah. And and because in the American League, in the American League, from start to finish, the best team in the American League, I can't believe we're saying this, was Baltimore. Once. I mean, they never had losing streaks. They never. If if Baltimore doesn't have that five days off of those young kids, I still think they're playing. Right. And and uh, you know now with the Dodgers, Chuck, they just didn't have any arms. They had nobody left. Right. What they have four of their six starters had Tommy John. Yeah, they they lost and they had one on Tommy John that hadn't made it back yet, Walker Bueller. So I mean, their pitching was minor league pitching. Yeah. So, so, so I, I agree with you. It, it, and, you know, you go back and you look at the Rangers, and we were, and they lost that last game in Seattle, game 162. And they lost the division that they had led for three months. And they lost it in game 162. And they had to get on a plane and go to Tampa. And, 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 and everybody's going, man, they just blew it. They're done. But they just kept playing baseball. They just got off the plane, played the next game. No time off, none of that stuff. So I, I'm I'm a big believer that if I have a chance to win the division or come a game out in, in the same format, I'd rather be the Phillies. I'd rather be the Rangers. I'd rather be the Diamondbacks. You know? But, 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 but we had so much fun this year during the regular season because every – day was important to us we were kids we were oh. kids. you know and, and you know the thing that i miss and as 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 our old guys is there was no internet there was no sports center there was not but the sporting news that came once a week but your sunday newspaper i could not wait for our paper to get delivered so i could open up the sports page and I caught up on the standings. I caught up on the batting averages. I caught everything was right there. Every Sunday, your sports section was that thick in the Asheville Citizen Times. It was really awesome, and uh, we got to do that every day. Now that was uh, that was what was so awesome about our, the baseball season. It was like opening up the sporting news or the Sunday paper every night. It, you know, now when they played on the West Coast, you and you and Jonathan never slept. You, you at two o'clock in the morning, and my phone's going. Doo, 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 doo. I'm going, man. You know, we can look in the morning, but you guys, you were faithful to those when we played on the West Coast, be it the Braves or the Orioles. You were very faithful. I don't sleep much, but you know, the only thing that lacked this wonderful summer of being young boys again, we lacked one thing that we all did: baseball card trading. Baseball card trading. Do they even make baseball cards anymore? Yeah, they don't do it uh, old, you know, the old fashioned way where we get that stale stick of bubble gum. They get uh they do it, you can buy it in boxes and you got oh. there's nothing but there's nothing like that gum. It was probably thirty years old by the time we got a hold of it. David, from nineteen sixty five to nineteen seventy three, I had full Complete sets, doubles and triples. In 1984, my brother's looking at a book called Beckett's. And I had them in shoe boxes listed by year, you know, by the year. 
So I'm, I had three boxes in 1968. And they were up on a shelf, up in a, a cupboard, a closet, excuse me, a closet, you know, stored away. And I said uh, to my brother, Matt, what's this number right here? And he said, that's what you can make off of that card. I said, you've got people who will pay you this account of money? He said, yeah. He said, what about this number? He said, that's for the full set. I said, Matt, I got 19, I've got 1965 to 1973 downstairs in the closet. My mom's washing dishes and Matt jumps up and she said, hold on. Your dad told you to go take those and they kept staying there. Every time we moved, we had to move those boxes. I'm sitting there going, tell me. No, you didn't. She said, they're thrown away in a landfill. Oh, I don't even want to talk about that stuff. That's an expense. That card's valuable. That's That just came from our, in our group text from, from Truett. That's the Holy Grail. LK line. Well, he's the well. Well, his dad was a Tiger fan. His dad loved Al Kaline. I loved Al Kaline. So, you know, I'm just telling you. And I remember back in the 60s, my dad says, they don't play the game the way they're supposed to. Back in the 30s and the 40s and the, or the 40s and the 50s, in the early 60s, we played real baseball. I hope, now look at us saying the same thing. Same thing. But again, again, the the absolute goat of October changed the game. Don't you sit there, Chuck. Don't make me throw something at you. We all know that the goat of October, Mr. October, the magnitude of me, the straw that's the irrepressible. Don't be truculent, Reggie Jackson. Is truculent My, good? If it's good, if it's, truculent. If truculent's good, I'm good. Because I will tell you. Now, now, now listen. All right. I'm listening. Listen. Ten-year-old boy. Yeah. Come home from school. Yeah. Playoff game. Yeah. Playoff. Three out of five. Daytime. The swinging A's. Swinging A's. Against the Tigers, managed by Billy Martin. And if you want to see, and I and I'm when I say this, I'm really serious to to if you want to see what, what baseball really is, and, and, and I don't know how the quality is like, is like it is. It's almost like it's 1080p. Go to YouTube. Everybody that loves baseball, go to YouTube and type in 1972 uh, ALCS Oakland and Detroit and just watch it. It is amazing how the game is played the talent that was on that field, how many Hall of Famers on those two baseball teams. Uh, Bert, and, 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 yeah, when I say this, you get really angry, uh, but Burt Campanaire should be in the Hall of Fame. And game two, when he was assaulted by Billy Martin's pitcher and he threw that bat in self-defense. <laughs> it's just great to watch. If you want to see the way the game, it just, it, uh, there's nothing about it that's not good. The fans, the day baseball, Tiger Stadium in the afternoon, fill to capacity when the winner goes to the World Series. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I will tell you that if he, if Reggie Jackson that year, 1977, when he hit three home runs out in Yankee Stadium, if he was playing in Detroit, there would have been three flyouts. Yes, they would. He didn't hit anything miraculously, you know, you know, 4,000, what? Oh, the glove, Reggie Jackson. That's Truett. Truett he Jones. knows, man. listen, Truett, you know, I, I started this group text, buddy. I started this thing. We've been doing this, what, 11 years now? Yeah, yeah. And we're pretty particular about who's in it. Yeah, you're in now, dude. The glove, yeah. he's in. Patsy, <laughs> we, we need a Patsy. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, it's just again, you know, baseball is exciting, and I'm not going to take away from that. But, uh, and and I am not a fan of the commissioner. Uh, I think he's bad for baseball. But I have to give him credit. 
the pitch clock, which now is not even an issue. Now they just play like they're supposed to play. And I was really upset about the throwing over twice, and that was it because I'm thinking you're, you're dictating how people play. But stolen bases are up, and taking the shift away is the best thing they've ever done. Those three things. Now you're watching baseball. Hit and run, home runs. Kid, a, a guy that hits the ball and pulls the ball is able to get on base again. It's just fun to see that, that they're playing almost what you and I would call baseball. Well, let me tell you something. I just figured this out. Kwame, you, Jonathan, and now you bring in Truett. Four SEC guys stacked up against which starting next year, John Taylor and I are going to be Big Ten guys. Of course, I like ACC uh, Wake Forest too. You stacking the deck against us. It's almost college baseball season. So at the SEC will be represented well this year. Yes. SEC is the the top dog. Always will be. So, yeah, you know, listen, you you need to lay off the SEC, man. You know, you you, you might have to flint yourself. (laughs) Angie, we can't go anywhere. I had to pin, I had to pay penance. I had to go blow my own car up. <laughs> hey, my wife, my wife was sitting there. She hears all this stuff, and she says, "She said, boy, you two argue a lot." And I said, "Yeah, it's fun." She yeah. said, "But I'm gonna tell you something. I've been in something in sons." I said, "You have?" She said, "Oh, I used to go in there all the time. They've got some cool stuff in there." Oh, awesome! So it is. My wife Angie Feberness approved Sutton and Sons. That's it. Now. I got to go to a wedding, flying out tomorrow morning. Going to be there. Uh, my nephew Phil's going to get married, and uh, when I get back, I'm making the order from Orchard Coffee. That's they it. send me a mail, and I am going to get me the Blue Ridge and the El Damonte, the Reds. Yep. I got to get that El Damonte and the Reds. And you know, uh, Angie approves of, of of Sutton and Sons. Mama, Mama Crompton. John's grandmother, my mother, approves of Orchard Coffee. And again, when I say this, if mama's listening, she'll get mad at me. But I will tell you, she approves of no one's else foods, no one's else, nobody else's coffee. She does not approve unless she does it. Or if it's, it's, you know, from our family, when, you know, the coffee and stuff over in Paris or whatever. So it is, it is Grammy approved. John's Grammy. It is approved. So we got both two, both of our sponsors are approved tonight. I approve what I do. I don't care what you say. I approve of you. I approve of the Crompton Auto Mart. But tell, uh, uh, tell him up there that uh, I still remember him down here kicking and to be safe out there in his job and congratulations on his wedding. And the goal every night is to come home safe to your family. So uh, as he protects the streets of Flint, Michigan. But a uh, uh, really good show tonight, Chuck. Uh, covered a lot of stuff. Great football. When are you going to be home? We're flying home Monday uh, Monday morning. Okay. We're taking a tailgate of Michigan, Michigan State. Oh, so you're going to be at the game? No. My brother, they're setting up uh, the whole place in the back. Or if it's rainy, then they'll go down in the basement. they got people coming over. And they're going to tailgate, and they're going to if they're going to move it outside or in the garage. But someplace there's going to be a large crowd watching it. So we're going to experience that seven seven thirty game, whatever the kickoff is. Um, but he gets married on Friday night, so we have a rehearsal dinner Thursday. Married on Friday, okay. we told him married on Friday. Well, talk to me about Saturday, so I'll know what to, well how what to tell everybody for for the um, Jonathan show. I'm going to you know we. Oh, well, I'll be with you on Saturday. Okay. Right. Okay. I'll be at a rehearsal dinner on Thursday. So I don't, if I can sneak away to do the show, I'll do it. I'll, you know, I'll do it. At, it's a rehearsal now, dinner. We'll, we'll deal with Thursday, but it's Saturday is, is more important. So well, pick up, pick up your new BFF, John Truett, and replace me with Truett. You guys will be fun and two days before kickoff between Alabama and Tennessee, but I will be with you Saturday. Well, and I will- well, let, well, let me make sure before we get off the air that we say that properly, Tennessee and Alabama. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. All right. But anyway, Chuck, you guys be safe. Right. Uh, really good show tonight. Covered a lot of stuff. You got to see a Reggie Jackson glove. Uh, and so, you know, we talked a little college football. and But but remember, the magnitude of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got Are you stirring the drink? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Have a safe flight. All right, buddy. All right, guys. Everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you guys Thursday night.